This video demonstrates some of the features of WordSeer 4.0. Here we've loaded in some State of the Union documents. We'll show the documents here. They're taken from years ending in zero, a reduced set of those years. We've already done the logging, the mapping, the processing. Here we're just showing the output of the log. So this took 87.5 minutes to process. So we go to the top, and the, when the processing is done, the Explore Data button turns blue, and now we see the starting view of WordSeer once the processing is complete. So we see the most frequent phrases, the most frequent nouns, the most frequent verbs, the most frequent adjectives, and then we see the metadata and the counts associated with the metadata. So here we're clicking on the word great from the adjectives list and we're going to see sentences that contain the word great from each of these states of the union addresses. Now we're going to sort by the year descending order and we see the word that we searched on highlighted and we're looking at a few sentences from the different states of the union highlighted. Here we're showing the co-occurring terms. That These are the terms that co-occur with the word great throughout the entire collection. And they're organized by nouns, verbs, adjectives, and phrases, again. And the, dis dis the distinctiveness score is simply a TF-IDF ranking. And it's not computed for the phrases. So now we want to see this in another view. We're going to show a metadata profile. So we see how often the word great is used according to the two kinds of metadata that have been recorded for the States of the Union addresses. The two kinds of metadata are which president gave the State of the Union and what year it was given in. And we're going to compare these frequencies to the use of the word good. And you see the auto suggest that's in the system as well. So we'll bring up a side-by-side -side view that allows for comparison. And these are not in a sorted order, so we're going to sort them alphabetically here. It would also be nice to be able to sort them chronologically, but right now it's alphabetical, and we could compare which presidents tend to say good versus great. It would be nice to compare them on the same graph. That functionality is not currently working in this iteration of the code. So we can see Wilson says great but not good. Washington uses uh, the term great less often than good, and so on. So now we're going to view a word tree with the word good and see the context it occurs in. So for example, good citizens is used a couple of ways. And here's a quote from Jackson, Andrew Jackson. And scrolling down, we see good times, but not in bad, Bill Clinton. And another example, we see His Majesty's good. So His Majesty is kind of interesting. You can think about how is uh, His Majesty's good disposition in this regard from McKinley in 1900, still talking about His Majesty. So that's a kind of an interesting term and gives us an idea of maybe uh, looking at how is the word majesty used in the older states of the Union versus the newer ones. And here we're showing that you can search using a wildcard character. And we can see which presidents use the term. So. Grant was much fonder of it than the other presidents in this particular subcollection of the State of the Union. Nixon actually used it once, that's somewhat interesting. And so here we can look at detail at which sentences it occurred in, and most of the time it's Her Majesty or Britannic Majesty, Danish Majesty, Your Majesty, His Majesty, and then a monument of simple majesty by President Bush the First and The Majesty of This Great Chamber by Richard Nixon.
We'll also show some functionality here that allows for export of sentences of interest. So they can be exported into a spreadsheet with the download command. And it downloads the sentences as well as the metadata associated with those sentences. So now we'll look at another kind of functionality that shows information about words in context. So here we're just looking at lines from President Obama's State of the Union Address. And we can look at words of interest and see their context, their syntactic context, as well as their semantic context. So here's histories. And we can look at the syntactic context in which it occurs. So for example, we can look at the noun compounds that history occurs in like world history and what determiners it co-occurs with and how frequently across all of the states of the Union, not just the speech. And uh, some modifier relations, some uh, verb argument relations, what possessive relations it occurs in, the nation's history, our history, the world's history, American history, and so on clausal relations, history's call. Looking for another example, you can look at the word depression. And again, remember this is a reduced set of speeches from the State of the Union. We can see compounds such as business depression, economic depression, and great depression, world depression. Poverty, destruction and poverty, drug and poverty. I think those were conjunctions. It takes a little time for these to load. And finally, the word change, which was emblematic in President Obama's election campaign and how he views, he's used it and how other presidents have used it in their speeches. So we can see the verb argument structure that it's been used in, clausal complements, coordination usages, passive auxiliaries, and so on. Climate change comes up in President Obama's speech. And we can also look at words that occur near change in different speeches, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So this is a demonstration of some of the facilities in the WordSeer system.